Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Antimatter Chemistry. And do you see anything that is a little bit broken behind me? We might have a few experience problems in all of our spawners because when all of them are online, we are not extracting the liquid XP or essence, I should say, fast enough. I have actually gone in the back here and sorted out our problems. This looks the same, but it's actually different. We have now an XNet controller and we have extracts on all of the ender tanks and also inserts on all of the black hole tanks with filters. And all I had to do was select the rate of the fluid insertion here for the, um, for the ender tank for the essence. And it is clearing it out and doing its thing. And I should not have broken that because that was the external storage. Whoops, let me fix that real quick. Let me grab the bucket of essence right here. Boom, boom. We can do fluids, whitelist, essence. There we go. Cool. And we can cover this up. And what I also did that we're going to sort out a tiny bit uh, in today's episode, I automated the destabilized redstone. Energized Glowstone, we already did Lava last episode, and also Resident Ender, and we have the future place for Tectonic Petrothium, which we are going to automate once we get a pulverizer going to pulverize the rods, these guys, into the powders, into the dust or whatever it is, uh, so we can uh, get the uh, Basalt's dust, or the Perothium dust, uh, much quicker, uh, and we can then turn it into Tectonic Petrothium. But... I realized that this makes all the machines extend all the way to the edge and I kind of want them to look like this over here, like this edge and ignore the drawer controller. That's going to be hidden in the back somewhere because uh, that way the room is going to look just much nicer with an edge over there on all of the sides basically. So what we're actually going to do is I'm going to remove the pink slime since we don't really have a use for this anymore. The only thing that I would think of, uh, if I can spell pink slime, is to make pink slime ingots, because you can do that with the pink slime and iron ingots, but those are only used to make like, energy field add-ons, black hole controllers, washing factories, and infinity drills. They're used for the fortune add-on, so we can still set up this somewhere in the back so it's on an external storage, and we can use it if we need more of the pink slime ingots, but I have 53 still in the system and I doubt we're going to make 53 fortune atoms. So I think we're just going to remove this and this, and I know this is currently our food and we're using this uh, to, um, to not die basically. So we're going to set up these at some point in a different place. We could potentially put them here on top, uh, somewhere like so, and maybe like so and add external storages, kind of. And what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna put, hmm, I'm thinking we can put the water here in the middle. So we have that uh, infinite water source over there. And then we can put the essence on the side and we can toss in a magma crucible just for looks. And we can have all of those on top as well. And we can just move it all a little bit closer together. So I'll do that in a moment. But what I wanna do is tackle this. And what basically is going to happen here, we're going to have some polymer clay exported on top with some exporters like so. And that is going to process with the wither data model into some pristine wither matter and extraterrestrial matter. And what we can actually do is each of the simulation chambers, like this one is producing extraterrestrial matter as well. What we can do is just pump that into here and keep a zero in here and also the uh, the ender dragon matter in here because we're going to use two ender dragon data models to produce twice the amount of pristine ender dragon matters because I want to use one separately for uh, draconium dust and one separately for dragon's breath. And I think it's time that we connect all of the drawers together and set up the drawer controller somewhere in the back permanently. So we need to remove all of this and add the trim, which is going to do this. Why? Why do you do this to me? Why? Why do you not render properly? Okay, so this makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, what we can do though, uh, do we have any space in the back here? We pretty much don't. So what we can essentially do is we can take the drawer controller off of this. I think this is going to make all of these run. Yeah, we're going to put the drawer controller right here. And we're going to take this external storage and we're going to bring it in the back here and I'm just gonna grab some cable and we're gonna hook it up just like this 
on this side. There we go. So that should all stop the machines, I think. Yep. And what we can do is put draw controllers on basically all the sides here. Uh, and I'm thinking we can, if we have some space in the back, we can run frame trim kind of like this up to the next layer uh, where we have more drawers and we can run it on the side and we can figure it out if that is possible. If not, I'm going to probably have a drawer controller for each one of the layers. Which again is difficult because we have exporters here, but I'm going to see if I can figure it out. Hopefully, if not, we would have to make this cube one size bigger. Or actually, no, we don't because we have uh, we have space in the back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is the edge. Yeah, yeah. We can we can we can do this. We can basically just break all of this, uh, which is the middle part, and we can run framed trim like this, and then over to the top, and somehow hook it up to the next set of drawers, like so, and that should hook all of the drawers up to the same thing. So if we do something specific, let's say we put this down, and put our crystal, that's not a valid device. Let's put our, nope, nope, stop. It's crafting the, can you not please? Can you take, take it out please? So I can put the covers in. Okay, I've managed to put some covers inside of the drawer and we're going to remove this out of here. Uh, that's all good. And basically, we should be able to see these covers in the system. Yep, we can take them out, take them in, and that should work up to the top because I believe the drawer controller has the appropriate range. So that is going to function and it's going to look kind of decent as well. The only problem that I'm going to have with this system right now is that polymer clay requires clay and iron ingots and also lapis. It's three of the things that we are not automating out of the four of the things that make this thing. So uh, lapis and I believe clay and also iron we should get with the quarry. And I think we have enough clay that we are getting from we have 13,000 clay blocks. Yeah. We have enough clay for the time being, plus we have, I think, 33,000 iron. So for storing a thousand nether stars, which we have already 500 of, I think we should be good. And also to get like a thousand dragon's breath, we should be fine as well. As far as the draconium dust is concerned, I'm going to wait until we automate this, until we have the quarry. So for the time being, we're just going to go in the detector here. We're going to say this, and we're going to have an issue here with... Um, we have storage for both of the pristine matters here. You know what we're going to do, actually? I have I have a better idea than this. Hold on. We can get rid of these flat transfer nodes ah, on the bottom that we have. I think I left click. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and what we can do is we can put the extraterrestrial matter into a regular drawer. So let me put this in here and this in here. And we're going to put these three down here. So we can put this matter inside of here we then need to extract into all of the drawers which we can do with a servo on the back and we're going to replace this with a controller slave uh one of these guys uh if i have another drawer which i do not can i make just the basic one thank you game so controller slave we're going to put you right here we're going to grab ducts boom 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 and then we're going to grab some servos like so like so and like so, and we can say extract, extract, always active, like so. So basically, this means that we're going to store the matter in here. And then what we can do is we can add two more regular drawers here and here. And this one is going to store, let's say, the wither matter. And this guy is going to store the dragon matter. So basically, we're going to be producing the, um, the dragon matter twice as fast from two of these, depending on which... Uh, uh, on the amount that is in here because we're going to be using it for draconium and for the uh, dragon's breath as well. We could potentially, if we wanted to, switch this to something else, but it doesn't need to be. So we're going to have a control on these here on top. So this one is producing the wither. So let's do wither matter. Let's do emit when the signal is under a thousand. 
and you're gonna say export with redstone signal polymer clay and we need a crafting upgrade so i'm gonna need two of more of those so we can toss that in there so that should start crafting it as soon as we add a recipe and here we're gonna say pristine ender dragon matter emit when we're under a thousand when we're under the amount and here that crafting upgrade polymer clay and here this guy is just going to be like this polymer clay crafting upgrade and we're not going to set up the detector yet um you know what actually we can because it's going to just produce the pristine dragon matters all we have to do is not set up the one below to produce the draconian so that should be all good and running as soon as we add the recipe like i said and here we can do an exporter on pristine weather matter and we can set the detector in the back if I can reach it. The middle one is going to say emit when we're under a thousand nether stars. And these, oh yeah, it is emitting. It's so weird. Sometimes like these are much brighter than these are and it's so more, so difficult to see. Uh, we don't, if we do that, pristine matter goes in here and we have to select nether stars. That should produce a nether star. And then I need to just extract it down into the drawer, which I can do again with uh, just some ducts, or we can just do the flat transfer nodes on the bottom. Uh, we'll do that in a moment. So let's just set up the dragon's breath one as well. We're going to say this emit when under a thousand and exporter that. So that should just export all of this. And we can select dragon on uh, dragon's breath like so. And that should do its thing. And here we're going to grab a recipe for polymer clay and conveniently drop it on the floor, <laughs> toss it in here. And if we go back to our machines room, we should see the simulation chambers uh, getting polymer clay. Yeah, they are. And they're pr processing it very, very slowly. So we don't need any sort of speed upgrade, which is lovely. So that should be that automated. All I need to do now is clean up some of these drawers here with the, with the terrestrial matters. So we can do that and that. And we can toss that in there, that in there, that in there. We can then also grab the upgrades out of all of these. And then break you. Cool. And we're going to add void upgrades to all of these. And void upgrades are already in all of these. Uh, and these can only hold uh, a thousand, well, 2,000 uh, besides this one with the upgrade. I think we're actually going to toss the upgrade in here because I might want to keep more draconium dust. Actually, we have our upgrade already in there. One thing that I noticed, these storage upgrades come from the loot crates and I'm not getting any more, even though the mob spawners are running. So I'm assuming that something is going wrong either with the loot crate opening or we might not be getting the rare loot crates enough, I guess. But if I have spawners running all night, I should be able to get those. This looks like it's producing just basic ones. Like, I don't know, uh, do we even get the rare loot crates anymore? Is something bugged or broken? Uh, I'm not sure because uh, we're not really getting any of the other loot. Even though we did get, let's say, like a thousand of each of these upgrades or a thousand of these and a uh, thousand eight hundred of these and we have zero storage upgrades. I know I used a bunch in our drawers, but uh, we'll, we'll see if we get some in the future. I realized that we didn't have a data model in this one, so we're gonna toss this one that I got in between episodes, and it's currently just the superior tier, and eventually it's gonna level up to a higher tier. And this is using quite a bit of RF. It is using, I think, what, uh, around 5,000, 7,000 ish RF per tick, plus each of these ones have 256, which is, nah, it's fine. So, right, 8,000 RF per tick almost uh, all the time, so I'm happy that we can uh, pretty much get two generators uh, automated off of this. So the nether star and the halitosis, wherever that one is, right over here, are basically complete because we all we need to do is add exporters on the bottom to export nether stars. And then all we have to do is figure out what we're going to do for the culinary generator. I think for the culinary generator, for the time being, we're going to use Bam's pineapple pizza. I don't think we should run out of this for at least a little while and eventually we can uh, get it sorted properly by automating wheat and crafting Bam's pineapple pizza. But for the time being, you can just be exported in here. I think I already added a downgrade like so and like a so. So that should be good. Okay. 
And in here, I already hooked up the halitosis and the nether star, and all we need is the culinary to get an insert with Bam's pineapple pizza. And then we need an extract on that drawer. Uh, I pr didn't hook it up. Nope. <laughs> extract on here. We're going to set this to be a pizza. And we can do a network cable. And up, up top. There we go. Okay. And here we are going to set up an extract wherever that drawer showed up. Like so. Extract single every five ticks. And that guy is running. Okay. Cool. So that is pretty much all the generators stocked up constantly, which is amazing. So we can now basically turn all of them on and we would have 25 million RF per tick. I am going to use this trash can for energy to avoid the 25 million RF per tick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're basically going to avoid all the power that we're making from all of these generators because what we can do is let's say on channel four, we're going to create an energy channel and we're going to create extracts on all of these and we can do specified limited to McJD 13 copy spec in value per tick. Okay, so we can do stable extraction if energy is too low. Yeah, we just need a rate, I believe of one, we can do that uh, from all of these. So basically, I'm going to copy this connector to the clipboard, and we can then just paste on all of these, like so, and we can then add a trash can over here. It doesn't really matter where it is. It's just so, so long as it's on a connector. So the trash can will show up here. And we can create an insert, we could have just inserted the rate of one. But that should, I believe, as soon as the generators are on, start transferring power. And what we can then do is we can set up, let's say on channel six, we're going to do a logic channel. And we need to create a redstone signal when it equals 15. Uh, and what I want, we're, we're going to need, there's a connector here. Let's do a lever for the time being, eventually, this is going to be possibly a detector or an RF monitor or something. But this lever should show up here. So in the lever, we can set logic, and we can create a sensor. Oh, no, we can just do yeah, sensor for redstone signal equals 15. And we're going to output on white. And here, we're not going to do a sensor, we're going to do an output on color white, and we're going to output 15. Uh, and then we can copy this to all of the generators. And then if we flick the lever, we should ah, be able to turn all of them on and see if we start producing power. All right, let's see if I did everything correctly. If we do this, nothing happens. Because I totally put it on. <laughs> okay, I put it on the wrong thing. Sensor redstone equals 15. Output on color white. No. Oh, hello. You're running. Does it only work on one and not all of these? I mean, we can easily sort it out by running a structural duct on top and adding relays on all of these. And then we can add a detector somewhere in the back, outputting a signal for power or something. In that sense, I think that will work as well. But I want to figure out because you can do redstone signals with this. I just don't know why it doesn't work for this output color on white when it equals 15. Does it only go to one generator? Oh, no, it's just because this one is 15. But I copied. I copied those paste. Oh, it doesn't paste the redstone value. Okay, I got to go through all of these and emit redstone 15. Hopefully now it all works. Oh, everything is most of it stuff is turning on. Why are you not turning on? Well, a lot of the other ones did work. Ah, no. Who did I miss? Ender generator? How did I miss this? Apparently this one, I clicked on all of these. I was sure of it. Now. Ernest, Nether Star. Apparently I'm missing most. 
Oh, you're full on power. Well, hmm. Let me go through this again and see if I missed any and then we can sort out the power possibly. We might have to extract more power than I was thinking. Okay, all I had to do was tweak the numbers of the extract for a few of the generators. I think like the slimy one needed 40 RF per take. I just went and increased it like 10 at a time. And uh, I increased it for a couple of these. For the nether star generator, I set it to a thousand. I don't know how much it exactly makes, but we can try lowering it and uh, see where the threshold is. But if we do this, we see the rainbow generator working and it's not flickering on and off. The generator spectrum is complete. Here we're extracting, yeah, we're pretty much extracting enough power that this is basically just slowly running and doing its thing. And I do get withered uh, when I'm next to those. And I don't want to go next to the death generator because I believe that one will just kill me. So uh, we have that fully functioning. And now we need to get some of these IO crystals, I believe, and also the draconic energy relay. I might need the, the wireless thing because we also need to do uh, we need to do an input. I believe these are the things that we need energy pylons. Yeah, uh, we need a draconic core and some draconium draconic core. And you make me a stack of I don't can I make four? Please let me make four. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we can do this and a draconic core, boom, energy pylons. And then I believe you need glass blocks. Uh, on top and on the bottom and if we go to the Rubik's cube here in the middle we can set up an input and an output for these I don't know exactly where I can put this or where I have to put this I'm gonna figure it out I'm gonna read about it and we can uh, finally start using this for power we're gonna start off on the generator here and we're gonna place a draconic energy IO crystal and then we can go over to the Rubik's cube and in here we're gonna set up these pylons and depending on where you place the pylon, you have to place the glass. So if the pylon is underneath the center of the cube, the glass goes on top. And if it's above the cube, which this one is gonna be, uh, and if we find the center block like so, uh, we can place this guy here and that for example can be the output and the one on the bottom is going to be an input and you can simply right click the core to set whatever this is. And what we can do, I believe, is we can put this guy here. And if we then grab our crystal binder and we shift right click this guy and if we go over to the rainbow generator and we right click this guy, they should be linked. I think. So if we turn this on and we go to the Rubik's Cube, we should be seeing power going in here. We are not. Um, hmm. Your input. We are not seeing power. Hmm. Okay, I figured it out. You need to shift right click and on the bottom you can see input and output. So if we do, I believe input, if I read it this correctly, if we go in here, energy network and do the basics. So it has an input output and balance input will make the crystal accept energy from the block it's attached to and output will attempt to send energy to the attached block. So if we go back to the rainbow, uh, the rainbow to the Rubik's cube, boom, we can possibly set this guy to be output. Aha, there we go. So we should see power coming in here, uh, at least a little bit came in here so we can go back to the rainbow generator and if we flick this and we go down here we are seeing power coming in new no. you are output that is linked up top output ah we have a problem with some generators, I believe. Oh, yep. Death generator, magmatic, pink. So I still need to configure a few of the inputs and the outputs. All right, I got the generator running again and we should, we're outputting 25 million. And if we go back to the Rubik's cube, are we seeing 25 million coming in here? We are, cool. So we're 0.5% full and this is doing its thing. Awesome, so the thing that I'm gonna have to do is somehow control the um, control the, oh, hello, ooh, ooh. 
Something's going on. Ender generator. See? Every time something happens, you just need to go and tweak the, the thing. So you're going to extract and you do 10. And then it suddenly fixes itself. Cool. Cool. So I'm going to sit here for a little bit and see if I can tweak more of the generators. But mostly it's working. And I would have, what I was trying to say is we need some sort of way to control the on and off of the rainbow generator. Because when the storage is full, I want the generator... Hello, lag. I want the generator to stop and then let the power drain to like 10%. And then we want to extract the power again. And I don't know if I can put the... Uh, I have the... I think it's called an RF monitor. Uh, this guy. I don't know if this works next to the draconic storage cube thing. Uh, I think we're going to need two of these. So let's do something like this. Bam, bam. So if we go and... Go to the Rubik's Cube. Can I place you? You do the Draconic Energy. Okay. Can, where can I place you? Can you go like next to this? That doesn't detect it. Um, next to this? No. Um, hmm. So I can kind of control the energy pylon, but that's not what I really want to control. Um, hmm. I don't know if this has any sort of way to control it. Uh, to turn it on and off. For us to control this the way I am controlling power downstairs in the base, it's pretty much not possible due to us not having open computers or computer craft, whatever it's called in 1.12. And the only thing that can and will transfer 25 million RF per tick or more is this elite lithium ion battery. And that can be read with an RF monitor. I tested that in creative. So what we can essentially do is we can bring the power directly to the battery, for example, over here, and then we can transfer it from the battery to the cube. And that is not going to allow us to trigger, let's say, the generator when the reactor is at like 10%. We could only read it from the cube, which can store a bunch of power, but this fills up from the rainbow generator in like an instant. So it really isn't going to do what it's supposed to do so i don't know what we can do for this so if you do have any ideas on how we can sort this out please do let me know down in the description i would really love to know if we can get this sorted if not i might just look into this and set up like an array of these and store a bunch of power in that and then maybe we trigger when the last one is empty uh, we trigger the generator or the last one is almost empty and when the last one is full we turn off the generator something like that uh, Because f I mean To be honest, we're gonna make a power cell for creative. I think uh, Creative I think we can make this guy creative power cell and somebody said that uh, for the pure antimatter ingots I only need to make four because if we make the creative storage disk, this means that we have an infinite amount of any of the items. So I would think I would need to make five of these, right? And then we have an infinite amount of these. And then we can just make the creative uh, power cell. And that way, this pack is not as insane as I thought because each one of these requires uh, a whole bunch of these, which require a whole bunch of these. So we aren't going to need that many of the antimatter catalysts, which is two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven per. So we need uh, 55 of these, which means we need 55 of each of these singularities, which means we need 55 times 5 of each, 5,000 of each of the, um, the chemicals. So that is still going to be a whole lot of work. And speaking of that, uh, you know how we're using white uh, concrete to do this, or white concrete, white antimatter, uh, I turned this guy on in between episodes and it finished and we have, I believe it's scandium. We have 100,000 scandium in the system. And then I turned on the light blue or the cyan, the cyan. Uh, did you finish? Nope, it didn't finish. We're out of antimatter, I think. Yeah, we're out of white antimatter. Uh, so this is going to do cyan as soon as it gets, uh, and it, as it gets more white antimatter, which we're slowly producing from loot crates from our spawners. So we're currently getting more and more blaze rods and blitz rods and all of that good stuff. Uh, but it takes, I think, like 300,000 or so 
uh, antimatter to get the 100,000 of each one of these that we are looking for because we're finished on the chromium and the scandium. We're doing indium and whatever the other thing is that this is making, uh, which I'm not really sure. Hello, let's just check because I'm wondering. Uh, indium and uh, barium. Did you finish on the barium? You did. We have 138,000. Oh, okay, because you get, yeah, 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 of course, because you get more barium than you get indium. Okay, that's neat. Uh, so I might do some more math in between episodes and see if we actually need 100,000 of each one of these. And we can uh, just make the appropriate amount that we need. But we're going to still need to dissolve a whole bunch of other things that we're going to have to farm if we want to actually finish the pack. So, um, yeah, all of that is going to have to wait until next time, though. And with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm really hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to get notified of when new videos go live. And you can also support me on Patreon as well if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.